Usually, I would want to put a disclaimer on one of these, saying not to send hate to anyone I mention, but that doesn't really apply because the person I'm talking about today, they're dead. This is one of those videos where we have a lot of information and no information at the same time. What we do know is Mariah Lewis, born in New York City on March 30th, 1768, was the daughter of a woman named Susanna and her second husband, Richard Lewis. The family wasn't well off, with her father being a merchant and with Mariah having 11 other siblings. Susanna, her mother, knew how to write her name and went on to teach her daughter how to write. When Mariah was age 15, she married James Reynolds. James had served in the Revolutionary War and frequently tried to claim damages and get reimbursed for them by the government. James was much older than Mariah and also extremely abusive. Two years after they married, Mariah gave birth to their only child and named her Susan. A few years passed and Alexander's pamphlet shared that 23-year-old Mariah Reynolds came to his family home in the summer of Philly, speaking of how James was abusing her and how he had left her and their young daughter to run off with another woman. She asked for money and help getting two friends in New York. Alexander was eager to be of service, but he recounted later, saying it wasn't possible to pay her right then, so he arranged to visit her that evening, money in hand. And thus began a private affair that would soon make headlines across the brand new country. That fall, Mariah and Alexander continued the affair. Shortly after, Mariah informed Alexander that James had sought a reconciliation with her, to which she agreed, without ending the affair with Alexander. On December 15th, 1791, Mariah sent Alexander a letter, warning him of James's anger over the discovery of the affair. James made his living as a con man. He was quick to realize the potential offered by Mariah's illicit involvement with Alexander. In the 1700s, many who discovered their wives committing adulterous affairs sought the dueling ground. James demanded financial compensation instead. Alexander eventually paid James more than $1,000, more than $28,400 in today's day and age, and continued the affair without interference. In January, now in 1792, James wrote to Alexander, inviting him to renew his visits to his wife. Mariah, most likely manipulated into this scheme, also began to write to Alexander whenever her husband was out of the house. In November of 1792, James illegally purchased a Revolutionary War soldier's pensions and back pay claims and was subsequently arrested and charged for forgery, alongside his partner in crime, Jacob Klingman. James wrote to Alexander, who refused to help him and likewise rejected Mariah's letters and requests for further money. In response to this, Jacob then informed Alexander's rivals, James Monroe, Frederick Muhlenberg, and Abraham Venable, that James had information on Alexander they might want to know. Interested, the three men decide to visit James in jail. Soon, James began to tell the others Alexander was providing him with inside tips about government securities. He hinted on unspecified public misconduct on Alexander's part. Cue the room where it happens. Burr, 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 burr. In 1793, Mariah enlisted the aid of Aaron Burr and successfully petitioned for a divorce from James. Before obtaining the divorce, she had gone to live with Jacob, who she later married in 1795, and the two moved to Virginia together. Alexander eventually released his pamphlet speaking about the affairs, and I think any Hamilton fan knows how that went down on his side, but as a Hamilton fan myself, I never knew the extent of Mariah's life past this point. When you're presented with a story, you listen to it. But I wanted to read in between the lines and find the side story that's happening here. That's what's interesting to me. After the pamphlet was released, Mariah was publicly scorned and she and Jacob decided to move to Britain. She returned to Philadelphia without Jacob some years later and now went by the name Mariah Clement. No record of her divorce from Jacob Klingman has been found and soon thereafter, Mariah became the housekeeper of a man named Dr. Matthew. Mariah had talked about how she had written a pamphlet of her own, giving her side of the story that Alexander had told in his Reynolds pamphlet, but it's not fully recoverable today. What we do know about Mariah's feelings about the affair was this. Her letter to Alexander on December 15th, 17th, 1891 read, I have not time to tell you the cause of my present troubles, only that Mr. has wrote you this morning, and I know not whether you have got the letter or not. She continued to say, Oh my God, I feel for you more than myself, and I wish I had never been born to give you such unhappiness. Do not write him, no, not a line, but come here soon. Do not send or leave anything in his power. In the 1800s, Mariah's daughter Susan was sent to a Boston boarding school with the help of Congressman Willis Eustace, who had been petitioned by Aaron Burr to help the girl. Mariah married Dr. Matthew, and by 1808, Mariah's daughter was living with her mother, a new stepfather. There are accounts of Aaron Burr being deeply saddened by seeing Susan, Mariah's daughter, working in a brothel after he had worked so hard to get her an education. Susan married many times, but never happily. Susan had given birth to two children. I'm not sure what Susan's second child was named. Around 1810, Susan died from unknown causes, leaving Mariah to raise Josepha. Mariah Reynolds, now Mariah Matthew, became highly respected with her marriage to the doctor. She became religious, joining the Methodist Church, and put her past behind her. 
Mariah is quoted by those close to her as, she enjoyed the love and good will of all who knew her. She died on March 25th, 1828. While her life was very different from Hamilton's, it was still extremely interesting to be able to read about, and I'm very sad that more wasn't added into the musical, though I do understand why. What are some of your opinions on Mariah's life? I think it was extremely sad. I think she definitely deserved a lot better, and that that time was very cruel to women. But I really just wanted to talk about her because I think Mariah Reynolds was really cool and in such a tough situation in life. And that's all I wanted to talk about today. So I'm signing off. See you guys later. <laughs> Bye.